Hello. Hi, everybody. How are you? Hope everybody is doing well today. Thursday edition. We're going to work on a fun decoupage back today. Um, so just let me know when you're on. Make sure to say hello. And um, for those of you watching the replay, make sure to type in hashtag replay so I know you came on. Um, I really hope you guys had a great day and everybody's doing okay. I'm just cleaning my table here before we start. Um, I, uh, I am with you for the, I guess, well, let's see. I was here on Monday. Hey, Linda, we assembled a couple little snip art kits on Monday, but this is, this will be our first project with you this week. Hey, Rima. Hi, Cindy. So I hope you guys are doing good and um, having a great week so far, even though it's almost over. Um, yeah, so let me know what y'all are up to. And again, if you're watching the replay, make sure to type in hashtag replay so I know you were here. Um, I'm Teresa with Teresa Renee Art. I am the uh, owner of Deck Posh Queen and the Royal Court, which is our distributor for um, all kinds of all kinds of good stuff. So um, anyway, I'll give it just a couple more minutes. My table is now clean. And um, my daughter sprained her ankle yesterday. Um, I was going to come on yesterday, but I ended up going to the urgent care instead with her. But she's okay. She is doing just fine. It's just a little sprain, so nothing, nothing major, nothing serious, thankfully. Um, let me show you what we're going to be doing today. Uh, I am going to be decoupaging on this bag. Okay, this is just a little fabric tote bag and I you know I usually buy these in bulk like on Amazon or Michaels and um, so I have tons of these tons of this stuff and I can't remember where I got this one I think I think this one came from Amazon but I'm not 100% sure um, so and I'm going to be doing um, this paper which is the this is comics 0027 we're going to be using a couple things um, the this for sure, the decoupage uh, fabric media, fabric, let's see, decoupage varnish and glue for textile. So we're going to be using this um, and we are going to be using um, fabric paints. So it looks like my internet is a little bit wonky. So I apologize if it kind of feeds in and out. Um, yeah, so it wasn't serious. She, you know, she twisted it. She stepped on it the wrong way and it rolled. And um, she says she heard it pop. So, but no, no breaks or fractures or anything like that. So I'm glad she's okay too. Poor little thing. I feel so bad for her. She's on crutches. <laughs> Tomorrow is their field day at school. So she's not going to be able to participate in that. So, um, so yeah, anyway. All right, you guys, I'm going to turn the camera down. Let's get started. And um, we will see how this goes. Um, let me put this forward a little bit. Sorry about the shaking here. Go this way. So here's my bag. I know it really could have been worse, but thankfully she's okay. Um, and it's really sweet because her brother and her sister are helping her and they're holding all her bags and, you know, doting on her a little bit. So it's actually kind of sweet to see them um, helping her like that. So this is what we're going to be doing. Uh, I haven't really decided like what the configuration is going to be yet. Um, but I do think I'm also going to use this stencil in there somewhere. 
and I was looking for my scissors, but I cannot find them. So let's see. I think I might have a little small pair in here. Unless my kids stole it. Yeah, here's my, this is my little backup here. <laughs> Hi, Maddie. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to cut these little pieces out using my little kitty scissors. And um, I'm going to try to piece this together. And we will see how it turns out. So, Rima, I just loved your purse so much that I wanted to use one of these pop art, pop art girls, too. And I was thinking I might do it double-sided, but before I commit to that, I'm going to get through one side first and see how it goes. How's my connection, y'all? Are you, Am I... Um, it's showing that I have like one little bar, so I don't know if it's holding up for you. Hey, Lynn, how are you? I hope it's doing okay. So I did, and I also saw, um, Heather Allen from Penny Farthing Bespoke. She's been using this stencil a lot, like on her jean jackets. And um, I think it's just perfect for that. All right, awesome. Lynn, she's doing fine. Hi, Nancy. Thank you. All right, good. I wish I had my real scissors with me, but anyway. This will be fine. We'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, and I wish I had, um, am I upside down? It, it might just be the paper is, is upside down, but can you see it correctly? Let me know, Nancy. Can you see it correctly? Might have been the way I was holding the paper. Because I'm cutting it. This is right side up. I don't know. Am I am I right side up for everybody? Okay. Sorry, Nancy. Just you. All right. So I'm going to be taking and kind of putting some of these bright colors around these pieces although I I was checking and I um, had wanted to run by the shop but I didn't really have enough time so and I don't have this exact blue but I might try to make something close to it using these um, I also do have this one which is the poison so I have a lot of different colors of fabric paint to play around with, but um, a lot of them are in these really fun, they're not quite neon, um, but like look at these fun, vibrant colors here, which I thought kind of went nicely with the poppy pop pop art kind of aspect of this. So anyway, all right. So there, got that done. And I'm gonna move this to the side. And I'm not quite sure. <laughs> what is that? Okay, can I delete that? <laughs> can you delete your upside down message uh i don't think so i think it's going to be there for good for everybody to see all right so i just want them kind of spaced around 
so that it's not like, you know, lined up like that so that I'm kind of evenly using the space that I have, you know, I think that's okay. Something like that would be okay. Maybe, maybe like that. I do like her up in this top right corner. Maybe down a little bit there. I kind of like it like that. My dopey comment. <laughs> it's not dopey. All right. So I think this is the configuration that I want in terms of getting the paper on. But before I do get that paper on, what I want to do is I want to actually put something in between here as a barrier. Um, because... One thing that can happen is the glue can soak through to the other side and I don't want it to, I don't want these pieces of the back to stick together. So I'm actually just gonna take like a cloth and stick it in between and then um, pull it out because I don't want these, I don't want this bag to be, to glued shut because some of this glue probably will seep through and I just want to make sure that it doesn't seal shut as I'm doing that. So, thank you. I think it's going to be super cute when we're done. And I haven't used this paper before, but I've been dying to. So I'm really excited. Um, I was going to show you what I thought for the, for the other side. Depending on how this side turns out, it won't happen today. But I thought I might do the this paper on the other side. So we'll see how that goes. But first, I like this one a little bit better. So I'm going to start with this one. Okay, so now... For my placement again, we had it figured out, didn't we? I kind of like that. So I kind of like that. Any questions before I start decoupaging away? Hey, Gwen. Thank you, Lynn. Much appreciated. Let me pull this down a little bit so it's fully in the frame. All right. So I'm just going to use this. This is the um, decoupage varnish and glue for textiles. Um, I actually saw Lynn, uh, not Lynn, I saw Mara use this the other day, and um, she did something kind of interesting that I think I'm going to try to, um, because the, the key to this stuff really is that you um, get a very good adhesion underneath um, the paper. And so I saw her do this yesterday and I thought it was such a clever idea. She actually put some decoupage glue on the back of her paper also, um, which really kind of double ensures good contact there. And I thought that was so clever. So I'm doing that too. And um, I think that's working out nicely. And that ensures that I'm not missing any um, surface coverage to adhere this piece on. So, oops. So anyway, I think that's working out okay. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of a layer on top as well. Hi, Sharon. So I think that's a good idea. I like her, I like her technique there. All right, so I'll do it. I'll do the same thing on that one, this one, and that one. So I'm laying down a base coat of this stuff, nice and thick there. And then I'm just going to do another thin layer here on the back of the paper so that I don't miss any areas when I go to 
adhere this. So. Because that's the most challenging part. Because um, this this glue is, is kind of sticky, but it's not real, real sticky, like to where it's instantly going to grab. You do sort of have to mash it down a little bit. And if you get really good contact on your first layer and it's nice and sealed, you do not need a second layer of this decoupage glue. One will be plenty. All right, so. Let's do that here as well. So I got that down. Let me just grab my little and then the edges here, super important to get those down nice and good. That's where you're most, most vulnerable is lifting on the edges. Okay, looks like that's good. All right, so let's get that covered. So this one may not really take that long. We'll see. Because um, I don't have that much surface area to paint once I get these little images on. All right. There we go. That looks good. I am happy with that. All right. So... Stick that in water, let me dry, and then we will start doing a little painting. Fun, fun, fun.
Okay, so that's dry enough for me to start painting. And what I'm actually thinking, I'm actually thinking of like color blocks, like kind of, cause these are blocks of color. And so I'm thinking of kind of just continuing um, that same theme and doing some color blocks, you know, maybe some green here, some red here, orange down here, and maybe some yellow or pink, just to kind of like give it a, a blocky thing. Hopefully that makes sense what I'm talking about. And you're not like, what? Um, so this green is um, a lot different than this green. So I am going to mix a little bit of the pine green with it just to darken it a touch. And let me just pour some out over here. Okay. Get that. And then maybe a little bit of this one. There we go. That is quite. I lost some of that vibrance though when I did that. But I'll get a little bit more of that vibrant one. Maybe if I stick a little bit of yellow in there, that'll brighten it up. This is a very bright yellow. I haven't used this one before. There we go. That's pretty good. So that's about the same color as that. All right, so I'm gonna just take that and I'm gonna do a color block. So I'm gonna try to get it as straight as possible, but it's probably gonna end up looking a little choppy just because I didn't draw myself any lines or anything. So I'm thinking I'll just go right to the edge of this little block here. Hi, Jesse. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hopefully I don't have to mix any more paint because I'm not sure that I'll be able to match the color if I do. Hi, Nicole. How are you? Thank you for joining. So I'm just trying to keep this kind of like square, blocky, um, we got lots of, there's some circles in here, so there is some little bit of like geometrical stuff happening. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, so that's not too bad for a freehand little color block there. It's like Benetton. Do you guys remember Benetton? United Colors of Benetton, where they had just all these squares of bright, vibrant colors. 
or am I showing my age? All right, so stick that in there. Let me move this off. Hi, Amber, how are you? Hi, Karen. I am glad you're here. Thank you for joining. All right, so um, what I'm thinking here, like there in the middle, maybe a strip of orange in here. Let's do a strip of orange, something a little unexpected there. All right, so let's get our orange. Thank you, Amber. This is going to be so much fun, you guys. So fabric paint, just like this fabric decoupage, it does need to be heat set. So tomorrow when this is all dry, I will take an iron to the whole thing and I will heat press it. And it's like you hold it for 30 seconds in the same spot and then move on to the next spot. So, um, so that will happen tomorrow. No big deal there. All right. This is um, the Pentart fabric and leather paint. And this color is just called orange. So I have some very vibrant, bright fabric paint colors that I had not used yet. So that's what we're doing. All right, so I think what I'm going to do here, um, I'm going to take my little ruler or a guide or something. Let's see. So I'm going to take a guide because I want, I just want to do like from here to here. And then I want to do like here to here, but I don't want to do here. So I'm just kind of marking off where my square should be here. All right, let's do a blue here in this corner. And let's see if I can get a vibrant, this is the poison green color, which probably would be okay. I, I just want to lighten it up a little bit. So let's get that because I kind of wanted to balance this blue up here. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, they, these are um, really awesome to work with. And we have tons and tons and tons of colors of fabric paint. Um, so plenty of options. All right. Now, okay. I think that's, I think that's pretty good. I don't know that I'm going to be able to get much more vibrant than that. Maybe if I put some of this, this is a metallic one. Maybe if I put a little bit of this one in there. Let's see. 
Just mixing up my own little blend here. All right, I think that's fine. All right. Now. <laughs> well, you know, Amber, um, the, do I top coat? No, you don't need to top coat this when it's done. Um, yeah, so they've, I mean, look, Pentart's been around a really long time, um, but they're relatively new to us here in the, in the United States. Um, and you know, we, we've carried the product line for quite some time, but, um, more and more of our retailers are, um, are buying it and using it and really just, it's catching on how really awesome this product line is. They've been using this in Europe for years. I mean, um, the company is has been around for a while. So I don't know exactly when they started it, but it has been around for quite some time. Yeah, me too. Mar um, Valerie, uh, I was thinking about you actually this morning and I need to get you and Nancy together because um, we actually have all the chalk paints now and I know you use a different brand, but I would love for you to try um, the Pentart chalk paints, maybe on a small piece and let us know um what you think because we have we have every color now of the chalk paint so get nancy to um help you get an order in of that awesome all right nancy if you're still on uh valerie is valerie wants to try some chalk paint so hook her up sister all right, there we go. So yeah, I'm just doing, um, I am doing just a color block here. Okay. All right. All right, awesome. I did not, Valerie, I didn't get, I don't have the, um, like the, we've got the bonding primer, but that's more for mixed media. They also have a blocking primer for furniture, like more for decor, you know, furniture pieces. Um, so I will try to, um, get that in next time I order as well. All right. So the challenge here is just staying in the lines because I'm using this um, mega big paintbrush here, which is really not the right paintbrush for what I'm trying to do. But I'm also trying to cover a large area at once. Um and it's got a flat edge, so it's working okay, but <laughs> it's not for detail work. If you guys know, you know, if you've watched me paint before, you know I generally use like really, really, really tiny brushes for painting. So painting with this big mega monster brush is challenging. And I also didn't clean my brushes last night, so I don't have that many to choose from at the moment. All right. What was I thinking? Got to clean your paintbrushes every night, sisters. Hey, Amanda. 
How are you? Nice to see you. Thank you for joining. Okay, so now I'm going to do one more color block here, this whole rectangle. And that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep it rectangles. Um, so I'm not sure um, what color I'm going to do here. I'm thinking either yellow. Yellow looks good. I'll let you guys decide on this block, either yellow or pink in this rectangle right here. So you guys let me know if you want me to do yellow or pink. It is good to see you, Amanda. Hey, Julie. How are you? Thank you, guys. This is really just such a fun, this is a fun project. I'm glad I, um, <laughs> okay, we got one vote for pink, one vote for yellow. We got two votes for yellow. Um, any other, any other votes? This is the group participation part. Okay. You have spoken. You want yellow. All right. We're going to do yellow. All right. Let me get, I think what I'm going to do like this time is because of this little details here. I'm going to go around the edge first with um, my little finer brush here that I have a little bit more control. I've been dying, like I've had these colors forever and I have been dying um, to use them. And I'm just going to be honest, I do not think that any of the DQ, any of our retailers have actually bought these bright colors and fabric paint. So if you like it and you want to get them, then just hit up one of our retailers because any of them can get them for you. Um... So like I said, I don't think that anybody really actually has these in stock. Um, but any of our retailers can get it. And so if you're a retailer and you are um, on, feel free to share your links, etc. If you do have fa fabric paint, even if it's not these colors, feel free to link those as well. And by all means, if you're a retailer and you think you want to get these colors, then um, oops, then you can get them. I have them in stock. Uh, this is this one is called magenta orange yellow um they're not i wouldn't say neon but they are really super vibrant so very very good beautiful vibrant colors and you can see like they're they're going on really nice like there's a there's a lot of pigment in them um so they are quite quite bright as they're going on. Um, I am getting, I just, I have a, a shipment coming in um, from Pentar. It may be here tomorrow, but I am getting uh, neon acrylic paints, like regular acrylic paints. And I am getting um, glow in the dark acrylic paint. So super excited about those neons. Okay. All right. I 
I have a lot more control with this smaller brush, even though it's going to take longer. <laughs> I like it better. So. It's kind of the it's kind of the big thing right now is all the neons. Um, and I've always just kind of said, eh, but the more I see it, the more it grows on me. And I, I'm one of those people is like, you know, I'm very, very stuck in my ways. Um, and then like, you know, I'm one of those people that kind of like, you know, a marketer, marketer say you have to see something an average of so many times before it sticks in or whatever, like people have to see things repetitively before it sinks in. Well, I'm definitely like that. I need to see it over and over and over and over again. And then I finally go, okay, well, I'll, I'm, I'll try that. You know, why not? That is me for sure. Um, so clean that. I'm just going to use the same brush. So since I, since my choices here were yellow and pink, um, in this block here, I'm going to do right here. I'm going to do the hot pink and then down here, I'm going to do that red. I've already decided that red is going to be here. Isn't it cute, Karen? Um, I just wanted to do something a little bit different, you know, outside the norm. And I can tell you, um, my daughter, both of my daughters are probably going to want, want this bag. So more than likely I'm going to have to make two. So what I should do is just save the other one for a second bag and not do the backside of this one. Um, so that's probably what I should do. All right, so pink is going here. So I'm not blending out any edges. I'm actually using the blunt square, you know, straight lines here to my advantage. Normally when I do decoupage and paint, normally it's because I'm trying to blend out edges and make it appear seamless. But in this case, we're doing something a little bit different. Hi, Kirsten. Yes, this is the magenta. Look how pretty that is. I did not know. Uh, I did. I did to get the um, decoupage glue to get the decoupage pieces down. I did that the textile um, decoupage glue, but I did not prime this with any kind of textile meeting medium. Um, I am just. I am painting directly on the fabric. Now. Um, it would probably go on a lot smoother had I primed it with the decoupage medium, but it's not absolutely necessary. So just a color block, just a fun little color block tote bag. All right. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you, thank you. All right, last square. We're going to do this block down here, and I'm going to do it red. I am going to mark it off because I've got quite a bit there. Um, let me mark that off so I know where to stop 
I'll mark it off down here. Now I'm going to use red. This is a really bright red, you guys. This is just called red. Look how uh, punchy and bright that is. Um, for the blue, blue and green, um, what I did was I mixed, for the green, I mixed this color, which is lime, because I wanted it a little bit darker. I could have just used this color, um, but I mixed a little bit of the pine green in it and then a little, a touch of yellow. Where's my pine green? I mixed a little bit of the pine green just to darken it a little bit. And then it was too dark, so I mixed a little bit of yellow back in. Um, and then on this one, I mixed, um, so this is poison green, which I could have probably just used poison green. But I mixed poison green with a little bit of sky blue and silvery turquoise. Um... So that's, those are my custom, those are custom mixes. Red, I'm just going to use as is. So if my girls decide they don't want, um, they don't want this bag, then it will end up in my auction. Um, and I've already talked to Terry, who is going to help me do an online auction, or not an online auction, um, a live auction here on Facebook. I think we're going to do it May 21st, which is a Sunday. Um, I got to double check with her on the date. Um, so I have about 35 pieces that need new homes. Um, but of course, Amanda, you could totally do this yourself. You don't need, you don't need to buy any of my stuff. Um, so we'll see if that ends up holding. We'll announce it for sure, though. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, these are, I mean, it's just a fun. And you could even, like, you could totally do this as a class. Like, you know, because right now it's 550. We started this, like, at 5. This would make a super fun um class also and it's not very complicated it's just painting rectangles right decoupage and painting rectangles so my um my critique on doing the um the back side of the paper um, I'm not sure. So I, I liked the idea and I liked how it went down. But what I will say now is it is, it's quite a bit more wrinkly um, than if you just lay it down without soaking the back first. And if you watch the replay, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I think that I would just, next time I do this, I will stick with my normal technique, but it's always, it's always fun to try something different, you know, and you, Try something and see what works best for you. Um, so next time, I don't think that I will saturate the back of my paper with glue as well. Um, it went on great, but it's now it's like as it's drying, there are quite a bit of wrinkles that will probably mostly iron away, but... Um, Awesome, Karen. Good deal. Um, yeah, it's a fun little, like, um, younger, you know, younger school age, college gals who might not necessarily be into all of our shabby chic things that we like. Fun to do something a little bit different and the other thing I'll say too like this is from paper designs and um, um, these are these comics are all very well done like they're not risque they do have a line of pinups that are a lot more on the risque side 
but these are all very tastefully and modestly done. Hey, Robin. Yes, it is. It is so in right now. And we can get these, any of these prints, we can get um, in furniture sizes too, Valerie. Just so you know, uh, we can get them in the furniture sizes. I think this would be fun. Like this whole situation, what I'm doing now would be totally fun for like a, a girl's, a teenager's room like a dresser or something okay so there we go there's that red all right i could totally be done now yay um robin did you order one of the comics in the large format um yay all right so i'm gonna dry this a little bit more and then what i'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some stencil and I'm just gonna kind of add a little bit of um, stenciling detail. So yeah, these take a little bit to dry, y'all. Uh, we're almost there. The pink is a little bit wet still, as well as the orange.
Okay. So, I'm going to do a little bit up here, and I think I'm going to use yellow. And I'm just going to see what happens, y'all. Um, I am not, honestly, the best stenciler. But what I do know is that it should be kind of dry. And I'm not really sure... Um, if this is going to turn out the way I want, just because, um, uh, it's going to be still a little bit transparent, but we're going to go for it anyway. I mean... Let's just see. Let's see what happens. All right. I kind of like that. That's cool. Um, so I think I'm going to use, it's just a little splotchy, right? It's, it's not bad. Um, let me use, I think I'm going to use the orange. May, or maybe, what do you think? Orange, pink, or red down here? What do you guys think? I'll let you guys choose down there. Orange, pink, or red down here? What are we thinking? Um, orange. We got one for orange. Pink, pink, pink. Need, give me one more vote. Okay, we got three oranges. We got three oranges, three pinks. Uh, three oranges, three pinks. I'm going to go with orange because I still have some yellow on my brush. I'm going to go with orange and I have this strip of orange up here. All Oh, that's so fun, you guys. I love it. That's making me so happy. Love, love, love. It's, you know, it's not overkill, right? It's just enough to be kind of fun without being overkill. Let's go down here and do a little bit more down here. All right. Now... Let me clean that. Um, I think I'm going to do the lime green over here. All right, and you guys, just so, in case you don't know what I'm using here, this is the Decoupage Queen. Um, this is called Distressed Harlequin. And this is from our um, spring release. 
So we have our own stencil line now. If you did not know, you, you know now. Um, and that's what I'm using here. All right. Let me... Okay, I like that. I think I'm going to do a little bit more green right here while I have the green on the brush. All right, you guys, what do we think? Do we think we need anything else? Or is that just enough to be... Um, just enough to kind of be quirky and fun and just breaks up the blocks a little bit, but not too much. How do we feel? I will say, I think I'm pretty happy with this. I think so too. All right, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for joining me. I think that is going to be a wrap for tonight. Um, I get to go to Hobby Lobby tonight because, um, uh, hi, Tammy. I get to go to Hobby Lobby tonight because tomorrow's field day and I got to buy my kids some matching shirts. But, you know, when you're at Hobby Lobby, anything could happen. So um, we will see how that goes. And... Um, I think I'll see you again on Tuesday if I, I may do a live over the weekend, but if I do, I will announce it. And um, anyway, thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and I will see you again soon. All right. Thanks everybody. Bye.